Welcome to Top ECB. It is the final word. Tottenham Hotspur 4, Everton nil. Not a good start to the season. Two games played, no goals scored, seven goals against. Is it fair to say that it couldn't have gone any worse in the opening two games? Could have had loads of players injured before the season. Say. It's got a play sent off in the first game of the season. Yeah. Yeah. Throw all that out. Sends a forward, he wants to leave. <laughs> Throw all that in the mix. Could that have star centre back linked with the move to our uh, nearest rivals? True. True. All He's not thing, gone. All these things could have happened. Okay. Like, can I ask you something? Because we've been doing, obviously, our shows all summer, and we've been having debates about Jared Brandt. He's been linked away the whole summer, of course. And it was great. And a lot of people were saying, nah, just keep him, make sure we keep him. I'm not really bothered about bringing other people in if, as long as we keep Brandt. Not bothered about bringing other people, you know what I mean. Yeah. We have to keep Brandt right above everything else. With it now, the way it is, are you still of that mindset that, or would it have been better for, and we never got the money that we, we think he was off, uh, sorry, he deserves anyway, so it's almost a moot point, but you look at it and go, could we have brought 60 million in, say, and rebuilt a little bit of the side, or do you think it's, it has, Evan have done exactly the right thing, keep him, and we'll, we'll piece the other bits together. What do you think? I think um, we've done the right thing because we never got the bid. Yeah. I think I think yeah, yeah. Got, you've both got the evaluation. Yeah. I think mean, we just never got the bid. If we've got the bid, then we would have sold them. Um, but it never come. Mm. And I think I think also when we when we um, when those bids first came, we were it felt like we were in a healthier position. And I think it would have been a real sign of weakness if we changed that stance yeah. in terms of everything and. Then maybe these people would have started coming knocking for other players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you can't have that thought. I've had mm. that thought myself, thinking maybe you should have just sold them, got the money, reinvested it, bought a few players. But it, you know, it's a different, it's a different world from what mm. it was yesterday to what it is today. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's the same way it was with Freakin. And and this is this is where we. And, and maybe when he comes back to the team, it'll be a completely different world in okay. terms of you know defending. Well, yeah, no, you're right, and it, listen, I'm, I'm not saying we should have sold them, I'm just saying, when you look at it money-wise, you sort of go, oh, what do we, but then again, let's be honest, we ain't spent the money very wisely over the last few years anyway, so. to say, and I think this could, we could do this video, we could do a sep completely separate video, mm. but who's to say that Kevin Fellwell does believe that selling Brandweight would have meant that he would have had more money? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Say that that money might have just conveniently disappeared, disappeared yeah. and he would have been left without a top centre back, yeah. and, and and maybe and let's scratching around. Let's be honest, Brantwaite improves massively when he comes in, and I'm I'm glad just for the record, I wouldn't have sold him. I'm just saying that when you have that that playoff, because I've seen people now going, should they just took the money and and built rebuilt the side, and it's like you're right, it, but if uh, if you're utter, you know if you're a hundred percent guaranteed the money. Then that's a different question. But your you first bit of the answer was right. Everton never got the bid. It was like when people were saying, should have took the 60 million for Anthony Gordon off Chelsea. Chelsea never bid 60 million for Anthony Gordon. They offered 37 or whatever it was, and Everton valued them higher. Ironically, they only got about five or six, seven million more than that. But there you go. Um, on to yesterday, we we done the preview. We were trying to be as positive as we could about what was already a very, very difficult fix. It's a tough game, Spurs away, they're a really good side, they play attack and football, they play on the halfway line, which is great if you have got quick players who can maybe get in behind, you can cause them a few issues, apart from they've got a bleeding 100 metre sprinter as a centre back, but you can stretch them a bit. We haven't simply haven't got that, so... We always knew we were going to be sort of on the back foot. Everton had won one in 23 games against Spurs before yesterday as well. So we knew we were up against it with having seven players, well, sorry, six players missing. Tarkovsky didn't look fit to me. He played. But there was a little bit of a surprise in Roman Dixon starting the game. You know, a lot of people, including me, I thought he'd go with Mason Holgate just for the, the Premier League experience. But fair play to the manager. But Roman Dixon never, ever... Even if Dixon had made five mistakes and we got B5-0, I wouldn't be having a go with Sean Dates over that. Good that he put him in. But it was always going to be a tough task, wasn't it, going to 
what is a very good Spurs side with a good manager. Yeah, it, was, it was always going to be a tough game. Spurs first home game of the season. Mm. You know, okay, they were missing Solanke, um, but they haven't had them long enough to miss that. You know, that makes sense. So they had to. Uh, it was brilliant. Yeah. So. so Spurs are like the anti Everton, aren't they? <laughs> like, do you know when you talk about two clubs that were at a similar point and they diverged in certain mm. different ways? Mm. You know, they had an owner who, in you know, in many ways, was similar to similar to what we've had in terms of like don't spend the fortune and, and made mistakes over managers and stuff like that. But once they got the idea of the stadium in the head, it was full steam ahead. Managed to, you know, they managed to uh, do good deals, get the money in, a little bit of fortune with Harry Kane, of course. They kept them longer than maybe people thought they would. would have. And now they've got a manager who the team built, the identity is built, it's his team. Uh, it's all about pace. Uh, all about pace, it's about risk. The high line we saw last year where maybe they took a few chances and they didn't have the players. But, and I'm not saying they have got the players now that it's too, too early, but you can see what he's trying to do. Yeah. They, they're stacked in positions. They've got lots of players. And mm. they are completely the opposite to us. We are slow, ponderous when we get on the ball. We don't really know what we're doing. We don't mm. really know what the idea is. But both teams, without being disrespectful to Sean Dyche, are built on what the manager knows or what his principles are. Mm. And the our manager is, he knows set pieces. Doesn't know about how to play attractive football. No, he doesn't. When he's got fast plays, he doesn't really know what to do with them. Doesn't know how to use them on transitions and stuff. So he goes back to this former leg thing of well, as long as Dwight McNeil's on the pitch and James Tarkowski, we've got a chance of winning a game of football. Mm. And when you go up against a team like Spurs, you ain't gonna get anything because they're just too good. Mm. Or you have to be in that stage of the career of the season, sorry, where you've won a few games and. It's a bit of confidence and you do what you like, you know, like we 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 that we have had that all the show. We have, yeah. No one's right history. Mm-hmm. But wouldn't it just be lovely to just be able to go and watch your team, your team play football like that every week and, and enjoy going the game and know it's going to be there's going to be goals and, and it's going to be a good good occasion. Mm-hmm. And you know, with the frustrations that Evertonians come from that. They come from if I'm a neutral I'm turning off. Yeah. I might stick around to watch Spurs score a few goals, mm-hmm. and but I what I look at that Everton team and I just think if I'm a neutral, I'm just like that's sad. So yeah, sad. I looked at it and again, this is the manager's. Again, I wouldn't have a go on him simply over what he does because that's what he's that's always been his mo. His mo literally was built on keep Burnley in the league with no money, he had no budget or nothing. So we've done a great job doing that, but eventually it caught up with them and they wanted to move on. And he's coming to Everton, he's done a good job because our club is, has been an absolute mess. It's a mess. And I guess when you're looking, like, you, you're talking about the money, the history is there for everyone. Everyone is built a new ground. Like, I remember Arsenal. Arsenal used to spend money. And then they were going to the Emirates and basically they, they stopped spending any money. They, there was no money to spend and they were saying it's going to take... While wow, this is getting built and all that, and, and Wenger started, what Wenger was unbelievable at was obviously spotting talent and, you know, an elk of 400 grand and went for however money. Got a few of them. Stopped spending the money because there was no money to spend. And, and this was, I remember, even lesser, probably a better example, teams like Derby County when they left the baseball ground to Pride Park. There was no money for a few years while it was getting built. And there's other examples of that with clubs. Spurs slightly different, but they never spent money anyway. And like you just said, they had Harry Kane and they reinvested and and, and whatever. So right now, in the last few years, it's probably it should have been seen. None of us wanted to believe it, but we should have looked at it and gone, "We're gonna have no money because any money we've got has got to go into building this unbelievable thing." And maybe as far as Mashiri took different pathway and got a loan for it the way. The way other clubs did, it it would have covered it a bit better, and it would have been more money. But that we can't do nothing about it. He made the decision at the time, and it, he he took it. Where we are now, we still spent money, but we we haven't. This is why I've banged on all summer about pace. That when you're recruiting, there are players out there. You know, I watched the Brighton United game before Everton 
I'm looking at Minter now. Okay, if Dominic Calvert Lewin says yes to Newcastle, Minter plays for Everton. It was, it, that's a, dead simple, and I would have set wheels in motion. But also, you hit it right on the thing before. The world's changed from that though, because at that time, the free king group were, were buying Everton, and we we covered this earlier in the week. But we know that the strategy changed the minute that they stopped. The minute they pulled out, the strategy changed. The money that is being put aside got put back over there. You can't spend that. And we know that Everton were looking at some deals that were quite uplifting to sign out the manager. So we are where we are. But we do play a strange type of football. Like, I think the game on was the, the, what I was watching, Everton and Koku was, was, and he was just sort of like, Everton just keep kicking up I don't know what they're trying to do they're just knocking a ball into nowhere and there's no pattern and then we have there will be games when we're in it with this manager and we'll win it because we're nice and tight and we'll get a corner or a set piece looking at the XG I mean you were talking before we, we come on here Everton's XG yes he's one but when you break it down it's 0.86 off set pieces it's open place 0.14 which is awful because we don't have any any idea. And when you look at Spurs, and they've invested heavily, but Odebert's only 15 million who they've just signed. He's dead quick. Everton, tell me Everton couldn't have done a deal for him. Of course they could. 15 million low down. I'm not saying he'd have wanted to come here, but someone like that who's quick and pacey. We know Everton are still in the market. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we get the manager some pace as well. Then we'll see whether what he can do with it. But... It is a difficult task right now with us, and I just think we need to we need to sort of define what we're doing. But when, if we are going to play, whacking it up to Dom, we've got to get people. They're going to be a Dom to whack it up to. Well, I don't. I personally, and I, I'll probably and loads here will probably come back at me next Friday night when he's still here. I don't think he's here by when the window shuts. I don't. I just. I looked at him yesterday. I looked at his body language and I looked at him when he came off and the camera went on him about two or three times he's on the bench. He, I, I don't know, I'm probably reading too much into it, but he just looked like he just was uninterested. Do you know what I mean? And I don't know, I, again, who knows? It's a snapshot, I, who knows? But I, I personally think for a couple of clubs, he's an option that it, and that's all he is, an option, but they know that they can get him out of heaven. I might be massively wrong here, by the way. But if he is here, we've got to work. He's, he wins most of the things he goes up for, right? Get people alongside. If a centre forward in this team, would you be happy? No. Because I would... Not a shell. No, there's no inventiveness at all to get the centre forward. Uh, so do we have to take the, the... Do we have to take the core out then and get someone... I had this argument all last season when people were telling me that Don needed to come out of the team. Mm. And every time someone said... It was me most of the no, time. No, but every yeah. time someone came, every time he came off the team mm. and you looked at Petal's numbers, they were exactly the same mm. because we played basically exactly the same. Mm. And it meant the centre forward never got anything. So whether you like Dominic Carvalho or you don't like Dominic Carvalho, watch it. Just You should have a player cam just on him. Yeah. And I'm not some hard wicked people go, oh, he's give up, but he's not doing this, so he's not doing that. Go back to the Roma game. And the goal he scored. Yeah. And watch the two games and tell can anyone tell me whether he's had one pass like that mm. to him where he gets to run onto it? Lad's got pace. Mm. Back to goal. It's hot spot. I made me laugh actually because I always do the heat maps. Mm. His, his hot spot was literally in the middle of the half. They have slightly to the left. And it was because that's where. Every long ball he went to. It wasn't as good as the Corey's. The Corey's hotspot was the centre circle from when he had to kick off. Genuinely, which was hilarious. Well, the manager took him off, didn't he, early on? Dominic Carvalhoon or any centre forward is near pointless in this team. That front four is going to have to change Mm. because Harrison isn't good enough. McNeil isn't good enough. Mm. And the Corey is starting to become a drain on on the whole team because... His legs look like they've gone. Mm. He looks like a boxer who's had too many fights and his legs have gone. And you watch him and you go, what do you do? I think he's, I, I, I will maintain with that, though, either sure, Corey, deeper. he's better deeper. Yeah. I I do think when, and we'll, we'll go through everything in a sec, but I do think when he when the freshness of Lindstrom came on and McNeil went in the middle and we had uh, Ndai, and Jay, as he says, Jay. 
uh, out on the left, all of a sudden we look, cause, because the two lads who come on, the natural instinct is to run towards the opposition goal. But I think when Dwight's out there, done it in the first half yesterday, he picks the ball up. And as an attacking player, you're supposed to attack the space, but he, he turns back and runs back. But I do think he was much better when he went in midfield. The core was a real weapon at times for Sean Dyson has been running past Don, but he's doing it less and less. So therefore, maybe we have to get, well, we do, we have to get someone. Like they had almost, they had two players off Sun yesterday. Madison was the bit, and Madison's a good player. Enough. But he was in them pockets of space, so he's dangerous all the time. Kulazevsky was cutting in and he was, they were almost having two number 10s at times behind um, Son. They had Alderbert, of course, and got, they've got good attack and play. Brennan Johnson. For us, we're going to have to, I think, change that little bit up. If, if we're going to go long to, if, if he's here, but if we're going to go long to Calvert-Lewin, then we, I think we do have to change the person who's in the 10. It's either Dwight McNeil, because he can, he can pick a shot away if you want to use the other two lads wide. But the reality is, both of those lads, those lads who we use wide, their best positions when in their career have been in that pocket. Sean Dyke did talk about in Dyke saying he can play anywhere in them them things. So so I think he is thinking a, a little bit about that. If he's not happy with Eddie Burnham and Garner, then put the core in there till Garner comes back. But I, I thought the other two did all right yesterday. But it's it's the, you're right. It's the four, the diamond four. When we break forward, it's just not good enough for us, and, and therefore Dominic Calvert-Lewin will struggle. Um, so we'll struggle in that and I think that's the key change yes Brantway comes in he makes us stronger at the back yes you know Dixon did quite well don't get me wrong but I, I don't think any Evertonian believes Dixon will stay in the team because he won't because the manager referenced Ashley Young's back for the next game personally Dixon plays against Doncaster for me because why would you take him out but I think that's what will happen I think we'll get stronger defensively but it's the front line where we do need to change. We we went and shot ourselves in the foot, didn't we? Yeah. The first goal, I mean, we had the warnings in that they could have been three up in the first five minutes. You know, Pickford makes a good save. We get a block in. Michalenko clears one right underneath his, his bar. But we go behind, and for me, far too easy. They just want the manager again, reference this. They just go bump, 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 and people are throwing themselves in. Go and stand in front of the lad and make him beat you properly. But we don't, the, on a, it was two dribbles. Son first went off, off the four players and it cop, gets recycled, comes back and then dribbling in the box, pulled back. Once it's back to Basuma, it's a brilliant finish, but it should have been cut out from there, shouldn't it, first? It's just, again, though, it comes from, there's no out ball. Yeah. They don't have. So you watch other teams, you watch, sorry, not other teams, you watch good teams mm. in the league and you watch out, they use... Like attack as the as their best form of defense. Yeah. You watch Spurs yesterday. They're not. They never. They never under press. They were never under pressure. There will be no teams, no. of course, because they press mm. and they press with pace. And we saw that for the second goal. They press with pace, so you never have a chance to. We never have a chance to build and get numbers. And look how many touches they would have had for that first goal. Just keeping it and moving mm -hmm. it. And Moving at pace and keeping players move, moving players around. When we got it, it goes over to the left, and then McNeil will either decide to dribble back to the left pass, um, or he'll get on the ball, and then everything slows down. Mm. And you watch how fast they get back, and then they pressurise. And because they're better players, Harrison on the other side hasn't got a trick and hasn't got pace. So therefore, everyone knows he's going to come on side. So therefore, it's so easy to defend. Mm. So you're not getting the crosses in. I think McNeil got one crossing, which was over Dom in the first half. And then everything else that we did tackle-wise is coming from just getting the ball in wide areas. And like basically, Dwight McNeil just like kicks it at people to get wing corners. But if you're not building that pressure, and you use that as almost like as a, as a deep as a way to defend mm -hmm. stay high that's what's going to happen you get camped in your own half and, and for that goal that's all it was it was just it was just a build up of pressure that you always knew was going to end up with it going to the back of the net 
And I'm, I'm don't get me wrong, it was an absolutely superb strike to mm. meet Jordan Pickford. His first ever Tottenham goal. After he'd saved it, well, of course, after he'd saved it, uh, two or He made two or three, yeah. But it's, it's, it's that pressure and we can, we, we can't ever, we never keep the butt because we're, we're not good enough players. You know, we haven't got, even when we play Doncaster on Tuesday, we won't move the ball quickly. We might have the ball, but we won't mm. move it quickly enough to, because we're, we're just, we're just not a good enough football I, team. I done the overlap um, earlier in the week, and I, I think I said this the other day, but I just found it really interesting. Paul Scholes was talking about Manchester United, actually. But what he was saying was, and it was funny because I watched United yesterday, he was on about how they don't ever have control of a game. He said, they try to score, this isn't Everton, but it's the, you'll get me points in a minute, well, I hope you do. He said, um, they never have control of the game. He said, every time United go forward, they try to score a goal. He said, and so it becomes a basketball game. And he said, where does Man City have someone who just puts the foot on it and controls it? And this is my point, honestly, that it does. I think it does. But I think with Everton, we don't have that ability of when we're under pressure and we, we get the ball away from the danger zone and we have it. We don't have the ability to just slow it down and go, right, let's get our shape back. I've got the ball and we'll move it and get me it back and we'll move it and give me it back and control it. Do you know why that is? Because the centre back lash the ball. No, just lash it. They just lash the ball diagonally. You know, again, I go back to Dominic Calvert Lewin. Did this on my start at 11. Dominic Calvert Lewin will always start for Evan while he's at Evan because he's a target. He's a target, man. And Beto isn't. No. Beto came on and had three touches. Mm. What does that tell you? I mean, I'm not having to go with Beto and mm. I'm not having to go. I, I, I can't reiterate the point enough that the style of play is what destroys us. If your centre backs are just lashing it forward. Mm. Yesterday, Dominic Arverine in the first half was in a different postcode to the rest of the team. He really was. So, what happens even when he wins the ball? He has to get it down, he has to take a touch. He has to be better than the centre back who are becoming increasingly better footballers mm. at the higher you go. And the style of what how does that style of play? And this is on the manager. Now, again, obviously two school two schools of thought. The players aren't good enough, mm. but the manager isn't good enough. Pick your poison. I'm not here to tell you which one, because I haven't decided yet. I don't know. But if your centre backs are just playing diagonal balls, how can you ever have control? This is something, this is something. I've spoke about for a long time about having control of games of football, mm. putting your foot on the ball and going, what we're doing, our style of play is better than your style of it. it it's more impactful. Carlo, where he, his style of play actually did have control most of We're saying in the early parts of the season mm. because he said to teams, We'll pinch, well, he said, come at us. We'll pinch it on just on the edge of the box and then we'll break with Dominic mm-hmm. Richarlison and the wide men. And it worked for the first half of the season. The second half of the season didn't really work. But that was a, that's control. Mark this side, the control, of, but, but it didn't have enough pace. But this team and the teams in the last couple of years, you can play counter sack and football, you can play that long ball, but you've got to have pace, haven't you? Mm-hmm. You've got to have pace. You've got to be able to. Dominic Carver, you played the long ball, Dominic Carver, he's got to have the ability to hold up or whoever's playing up front. And the wide men are there. But he does have that ability, but no one no, gets near him. That's the point. So yesterday, look at D- Dixon. I think we went, there was one opportunity where Dixon went, I'm having a go, I'm going here. Mm. And he went round the side mm. and we just couldn't quite get the ball. For the court, he get the ball. But that was the next time he did it. Mm. And that's the problem with this team because players don't take risks. Mm. You know, Seen something before, I was just looking on one of the apps and I've seen something. Slot talking about we're going to take more risks than Klopp's teams did. It's like risk and reward with the right players is how you win games of football. Mm-hmm. You know, you talk, we talked about Onana loads last year, uh, and ironically, now Dice started to say, Well, oh, he's lost Onana. Oh, yeah, mate, is that the play you didn't, you didn't play, or the lad just kept on looking over his head. But what Onani used to do was take the ball off the back foot mm. and then turn. And of course, it led to risky moments. But that's what good teams want because that's how you that's how you take the ball from your back foot, beat the press. Onani's brilliant. For, that's why Villa bought him because he can beat the... Not only is he a great tackler, but he beats the press mm. and you're away. 
It's why everyone's why everyone wants a Rodri. Because yeah. Rod and then you can take control of the game. But our our problems with it, uh unless I'm you know talking about Carlo. Sean Dyke hasn't got the players, Carlo oh, yeah. for a start, so it's difficult there. But this is why we do have to have pace. And it, it's why if he's gonna if he's gonna use McNeil and Harrison in the same team, then he needs to swap them. And I know Dwight McNeil, it hasn't been amazing when he's played on the right. I get that. But Jack Harrison playing... Because Harrison, I don't think Harrison's slow. He's not quick. He's not like a, he's not going to knock it and outpace people. But he's direct. And therefore, you may as well have him being direct on the correct side. So if he does get that little half a yard in behind the fullback, he can't throw it into the box. McNeil never yeah, does I that. Have Harrison anywhere near. No, no, but if he's got, he's gonna play him because he knows he's gonna. Die came on yesterday, and I think he attempted something like ten dribbles and mm. done six of them. Mm. That's what I want. No, no, but what I'm saying to you is, I'm just looking at other ways. If he thinks, it's not like thinking the manager's shoes right now. I I know what I'm gonna get from Illiman and that and Jack. You see, this is no. No, this just is listen not, to me. No, I understand. But no, this is, and I do this all the time. This is Stockholm syndrome. I do this all the time when I pick my team. We are picking the same players that the manager picks. No, I know. But you, no, I know. But I'm not saying I You're would do it. it. But there, what I'm there saying... Are, there are choices. That's why I wanted Roman Dixon mm. to play. Because he was never going to get beef for pace because he's got pace. Mm. And all we're doing is, and we do this all the time, is the manager just keeps on getting the same players and just moving them around. But he doesn't move to where it would be marginal improvements. If he swapped, I'm telling you I like that, but I'd put them off the team. No, no, but that's I'm just saying if you're gonna if he does want the safety net because he knows that them lads will do what they do, right? Then for me, he's gotta switch them. Because it, I just looked at look at the Brighton game last week. We obviously had the, the diagonal over the fullback and Harrison was in every time. But every time he got in, he had to stop and come back onto his left foot. So the chance is gone, they were just back goal side. Yesterday, McNeil, the odd time he got space and there was a chance to run into it, he doesn't run into it because he doesn't feel confident he can beat the fullback with pace, where I think Harrison would just stay. And I, I think if you look at Jack Harrison, isn't Jack Harrison played under Bielsa? It's massively demanding, and Bielsa had him in his team every week, and Bielsa's a good manager, so Harrison wouldn't have played, and he did play. Right? He also got relegated. No, I'm not saying, listen, don't get me wrong, I ain't saying Jack Harrison, you know, Chelsea and Chelsea might because they buy everyone, but knowing the top teams are coming for Jack Harrison, that's not my point. My point is, if you want Jack Harrison in the side because you know the lad's going to run up and down, work his bollocks off for you, and you're never going to have to worry about him, play him where he can use what tools he's got, get it out of his feet and fire it across the box. Dwight McNeil always wants to slow the game down and come back in and have a look up, right? So have Dwight on the right then. If he's going to play... Playing, yeah. If you're asking me, Dwight McNeil would only either play in a number ten, or I'd say right. If, if, I, am ask, I am asking you. Okay, so about what you're on that right. Do. Okay, so right now, right, I would have, I'd try, Dwight. I would try. I'd say I'd put Harrison on the left because I think even with him dying his dribbling, we got nothing from. Him. He didn't go round to and cross it. Never. Yes, he didn't put any. He was kept trying to. He was running into traffic. Therefore, play him either in the number ten. I wouldn't have the core in the side at the moment. And I like the core as a deeper midfielder. For me, personally, Bournemouth at home, I'd have Harrison on the left. I'd start with that. I'd have... I'd have... Would I? I'd have Ndai off Dominic Calvert if he's here, off the striker. And on the right-hand side, it'd be a flip of a coin between playing Dwight McNeil and seeing if he's, if he's any better. He'll be on the pitch because of the set pieces. So you got to think, right, okay, who's better there, right? Lindstrom, I don't know, is he fit enough right now to play the foot? I am sounding like that here, but but we have to, I don't think you're going to rip it all up. But I Harrison, see, I would. okay, but Harrison on the left and Dai definitely off the striker. Don't forget, don't forget we've got a game on Tuesday. No, we're not. Oh, we're on Tuesday, Lindstrom, no, that's the Lindstrom, Dixon and Dai. On Tuesday night, we can play. Hmm? We can play those players. Okay, so on Tuesday, I'm going and Dai here. Lindstrom on the, the right, Jack Harrison on the left, Ira Burnham and Garner, Dwight McNeil will be sub, right? And then, if it's not really working, McNeil will come on and Harrison will go off. But the two lads on Tuesday, the two lads for me have got to play. Jake O'Brien will be in as well. 
Roman Dixon keeps his... And that's how it's fleshing up with Bournemouth, though. What I'm saying is if you are going to play Jack Harrison, you have to put him on the left. I oh, I know what I'm saying. If he's going to, give the, give the lad... Forget him. Forget him. Give, Stockholm Syndrome. I'm not. Give the lad half a chance is what I'm saying. He's had loads of chances. No, no, you're... you're you're oh. saying what you do, but what I'm saying is if the manager is going to play him because he wants what he gets from him. What does he offer? No, but, genuinely yeah, but he knows he no, doubles no, up with the fullback. Does, does he genuinely? Well, you're not. No, but. Oh, no, but what's, this, is, this, is, this is where we're getting caught, though. We're watching a game. We're watching the team. Right, so, okay, you've got. All right, what, I'll put it this way. Jack Harrison. We're going to move on now. We're going to move on. The Jack no, just listen to, done in either game? listen to me. What I'm saying, right, is if we're going to yeah. use Calvert Lewin, if Calvert Lewin stays, right, past Cal the. I'm not. Calvin Lewin will be playing for Chelsea. What are you talking about, man? Listen, if Dom's still here when the window's shut, yeah. right? And what we're saying, Calvin Lewin needs balls into the yeah. box. He's not getting them from Illiman and Dyke in a oh, wide area because he doesn't cross the ball. No, but, but he doesn't cross it. I know, but to so be he wants to run and dribble. I'm not even, I'm not even uh, like calling for people to put more crosses in. Mm. I think if you get Dom in the channels by actually feeding them the ball. I'm sure of the ball going through midfield. Yeah, listen, listen to what I'm saying. Yeah, that's well done. Listen, Harrison on the left because he'll cross it and die off Don so he can feed Which them. Harrison? Harrison Armstrong because he's done well. <laughs> that's why I just think it's time. It is, I agree with it. It's time to freshen this thing up because the four he's got right now ain't working. He don't score enough goals. Last year proved that. We didn't get enough goals and he's just gone. Yeah, but what it, what's no, happened can, is can, we've gone, we don't score enough goals, so we'll just keep the them for them with a holding to Dwight McNeil because of his set pieces. Well, we know that. No, we know that's that that's where this team is. It's mad. It's it's actually mad because we have you took you probably I mean I don't know what the numbers are from last year, but you're probably talking something like over fifty percent surely of every goal we scored was either directly from a free kick. Or a set piece, mm. or came or like a, as a result of it yeah. of a set piece mm. and a free kick, and was so beholden to them that a player has to play who I don't be really genuinely believe. I I don't understand. I'm very honest about this. I don't understand anyone's fascination with Dwight McNeil. I really don't. I think he's a very very average footballer who's got one leg and no pace, mm. and I do not get it. I will never get it. No, but I think if you... I get the set pieces. Yeah, no, I think what I I'm saying... hard work. Yeah. But honestly, I do not get it. No, but what I, I think it's become... It's become like Emperor's New Clothes. Mm. People are being... Everton put him out there and he goes on YouTube videos and he's become somewhat of... A, he's liked and I get that. I've got no problem yeah. with that. Nice lad. But he's... A, Bang average football. No, but what I'm saying is, it, the reason why it shows up with Dwight is because the manager plays him as... When you're trying to construct a team, how I view it, and Sean Dyke will tell me I'm wrong, obviously, but this is me, and I've watched football for a long time. Those players are, are charged with scoring goals and creating goals in that final... Forget about the set pieces, open play. That's what you're there for. The best players in any team play at the top end of the pitch. Any team you've ever been part of, your best footballers generally are at the top end of the pitch. Dwight McNeil, for me, because he hasn't got that pace, is better centrally yeah, because I've seen him score goals that other players in our team can't score, yeah. banging it in with his left foot. So play him either off the striker, play him in that number 10 where he can get his head up and just bang it. Thought he did well in the eight yesterday. Why are you trusting him? And you know what? When we play Fulham away and he had to play centre mid, he had a good game because realistically, you should be playing with two number eights and a number six, really. And therefore, it would enable you to play Dwight McNeil with Irabuna and Garner. They could be your three. And then you could have Indai on one side and, and either Jack Harrison or Je Jesper Lindstrom on the other side. And you could do that. When Dwight's where he is, you, you're almost showing up all his... Um, all the things he can't do, you're highlighting it because he can't run. He's not a big runner. He, he works hard and he'll cover. I'm sure if you got his kilometres ran in again, they'd be right up there. To be fair, he had four dribbles yesterday and they were all successful. Mm. Two of them were back towards that <laughs> goal. But I think if you played him, and I, he was the one when we did sort of bring the other two lads on and, and wide areas and he did move Dwight inside, he was the one that was getting on the ball and trying to move it. So put him where he's at his... What I'm saying is, with saying that Jack Harrison, right, this, I'm going to move on quickly, right, and I'm sorry I've gone on too long on this, but if they are going to play, right, 
help them, put them where they will be more um, useful to us. Jack Harrison running in on his left foot where he can just cross it, where he doesn't think, I have to turn back. He can just cross it in front of the, stri the striker. Dwight McNeil, where he can pick his head up and have shots at goal or thread little through balls. Put him where he's better. Don't go. You're not very quick. And so we're going to play you high up the pitch on the left where it's about pace. Jack Harrison, you, you want it on your left foot all the time. We're going to play it on the right-hand side. He's not young. You know, he's not Mo Salah, who is lightning with that left foot, is he? So give them a chance is what I'm saying. Listen, let's move on. The second goal was just embarrassing. You know, from it, we throw it back, it, Tarkovsky plays it back. And the most frustrating thing, I know Jordan Pickford does this, all the time, right? And sometimes he do, you do have that gasp where the striker gets very close to him as he kicks it. But I don't understand why when Tarki played it back to him and then immediately pulled wide, he didn't just roll it back to him. He took it's a heavy touch and he wasn't even sharp to Son. I don't think he thought Son would press him the way he did. And he got caught and it's 2-0. Huge mistake from him. The lad hasn't done many mistakes in the last couple of years as Everton goalie. Yesterday wasn't one of his better days. He'd done a mistake and the 2 down, and that essentially then was, was game over if it wasn't before. No, it's a it's a horrendous mistake and it doesn't need overanalyze. No, no. But I am going to overanalyze. <laughs> because why is, why is Tarkovs giving him the ball in the first place? He's right next to the halfway line. Because mm. we always go back to him. That's the... That's another like fundamental of this football team. Mm. We're almost in space as half, and yet we're going to go back to the keeper mm. who's going to launch it up the pitch. Mm. Like, isn't that doesn't that say everything about this team? Mm. And again, you could go, you, you'll do that a thousand times. Mm. No, no, it'll be fine. And you know, nine hundred ninety nine, it'll be fine. But why are we going back to the goalkeeper again from that position? Why, you know it. I know that's not the reason why it was a goal. I get that. And I'm not blaming Ansaki. I just got to look at the whole thing. And I'm like, he's going back to the keeper. What happened? See, this is what. This is what the top teams do. And going back to your point about, about having control of the game. He goes back to the goalkeeper because no midfield show, shows for him because no mm. midfield is going to show for him. He ain't going to go long because he hasn't got the room because he's, he's being closed down himself. And therefore, he goes back to the keeper, who's going to kick it long, who's going to play a percentage ball, unless his left back comes right over and mm. comes back and, and asks for it, which he's not because he's already halfway up the pitch. Because mm. as we as a throw, we're already, we're already up the pitch. And so we're playing a percentage ball, so we're giving it away. We are giving it back to space to start again. Mm. That's not what good teams do. Good teams get the ball. And they keep the ball. But what... so the other centre back pulls off mm. and says, "Give me the ball." But one the centre midfielder pulls off and says, "Give me the ball." A, a, a okay, side. but won't just to play devil's advocate oh. there, or not? To, not even to play devil's advocate. People watching will be saying, "Though, no. yeah, but we're not a good team." So you're saying what good teams do? No, but we're not a good how team. Are we going to be? No, no, no I'm just saying. I'm saying we what people and again. This comes back to what side? Of the See, I, if I put this on, you think the manager? You think it's about the manager and not the team, don't you? I think it's, but I think it's a bit of both. But I think what I think is he, the way he plays, I just think football's moved on. So if we, so what he needs to do then is go. If this is how we're going to play, how do I help that team? It isn't what we've done last year. So, hang on, so, no, so I no, take, no. so I coach our yeah. Sunday team, right? Our little kids, right? They're not little; they're all bigger than me. But you know what I mean. But I, Zach used to kick off, like when we're starting a game, and kick it back to our centre back, right? Missed the midfield that would go right, and the centre back would kick it back to the halfway line where we started. Right, so I'm just breaking this down as basic. So I've said to Zach, stop giving it back to the edge of our box for him to kick it back to where you started from. Yeah. Right, so what we do now is the Kevin Sheedy kick off. We are well, we do two. We either keep the ball from the kick off, work it through midfield, or we do the Kevin Sheedy in the 80s. We knock it back, winger goes, and Zach hits a 50 yard into the corner, and we box them in. Right, so. Tarkovsky yesterday when Roman Dixon throws in the ball, why is he not just took it on his right foot and knocked it into the channel? Because he puts it on the edge of Spurs box then, right? And they have to turn and get it. We're still doing what Jordan Pickford's going to do. 
but even higher. But we're doing it up the other end of the pitch. So I think you're right. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. It's still a massive mistake by the goalie. No, it is. And I'm not getting away from that. Mm. I'm not hiding the fact of that. Mm. But it, it's going to happen if we are going back. We're going to give the ball. We've done it last week against Bright. We had to throw it below me in the Brighton half. But what happened? And we throw it back. And then it goes back to Jordan Pickford. If... And he kicks it yeah. back to parallel where the thrower is from. And Dom's got a jump when you're like, that's achieved nothing. It's achieved nothing. These are like these are the fine points that mm. for me are why we but are. But the players uh, listen like, we... well, like oh nah, nah, last season probably would have dropped off there and asked mm. for it because it, and it, and people have gone well they got because she would have brought someone out with them, but that's that's what that's what goes. But the players we, we can say about the coaching and we need to say, but the play Tarkov, she's gotta take responsibility. The captain, it's right. thirty one. That. that comes into him. Take your touch, be brave. The players aren't brave and that we can have a go. You can have a go at the manager. You can have a go at the coaches. Whatever, whatever. But when them lads have got the shirts, and this is why, again, I, I do laugh when people don't criticise the manager when we feel like he's done something wrong. But when we win a game, it's all about the manager. And so it's not his fault when we lose, but it is his fault we've won. Whereas that's why I said to you before, and you asked me, it's somewhere in the middle. But then players, they've them all the coaching staff can do is pick the team. When they cross the white line, they're playing the game for themselves. Don't they're go the back. Lastly, they're not playing the game. For well, no, right. but in that, in that, they're not because they're not the style of play is the style. No, but no, but in those, I'm just talking no, about the moments. Why is Tarkovsky? Why is it easy for him to go back to the keeper to kick it back to where the throwing was? Because footballers are the creatures of what mm. they're being taught to do, and in another team. A centre midfielder or an other centre back will drop off there and ask for the. But then that's on the players as well. Gonna yeah, drop off. This team is a boom and drop off. Go back to the keeper and the keeper starts and we. It, it's, but it's just not good enough. No, it isn't. But it's not good. It was a huge mistake. It was game over. Two 0 It could have been more in the first half. We had two big, big moments in the first half to score a goal. Jack Harrison at one nil has got to hit the target at least on the back post. He doesn't get round it and he puts into the side net. And, and we had one off a corner, I think it was, where it's bobbling about in the corner. He gets a shot and it gets blocked. Other than that, there was nothing. There was nothing of any note. Come out second half, kept the same team. They just started, I think, total control in the second half as well. The manager made changes early on. I think 53 minutes or something. He took the core off, didn't he? Um, took something else off. Harrison off, sorry, yeah, Jack Harrison put Lindstrom and Dye on and Jay. And Everton did look a bit better. They, they went, because the two lads want to go forward. You know, Lindstrom has our only shot on target. Good strike. Good height for the keeper, but it was still a good strike. We had moments where and Jai dribbling into the box. And this is what I'm saying. He was going beyond. We fired them across so the centre forward can get in on them. But we didn't really ask many questions. And we go and give a third goal away. And if the, we give a corner away because we're not decisive enough. And eventually it goes for a corner. Corners played in. I think the two centre-backs have got to do better. But for me, the goalkeeper, three yards out, has got to come for that. He's got to. No, got to. Vicario would come and claim it. We It comes in, he stays at home. The lad gets above Tarkovsky and Keane at 3-0. And any hope of anything of even putting a little seed of doubt into their mind was gone 3-0 and it was how many is it going to be? It got four. It went to 4-0 because Van der Ven strides out. We, we give, give the ball, ball away cheaply. We yeah, we give, the, we give the ball away for the... No, for the third goal. I know that's what I'm saying. the ball high up. Mm. And again, this is the difference when you're playing good sides. Mm. We, we, someone gives the ball away to us in the, last, in the final third. We go back to the goalkeeper. That's, what, that's my point. Yeah, yeah. We go back to the goalkeeper... Or we, we go back to the full backs and we just pass it, it bam, 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 along the back four. Their centre back picks the ball up and just runs mm. through the middle of our team. Plays a ball left, sun's in, stuck four nil. Mm. That's the point. That's what I'm trying to that's what I'm trying to get to, is that Do you blame pick for the tall for that? I don't. But someone sold me she'll have saved it, anyway. Game's dead. The game's dead. It's one of their moments. It, but this is the point though, it's like that's a team doing something that knows what it's trying to do and it doesn't stop. We're a team who I, I quite can't, can't, can't tell you what we're trying to do. Let me ask you this: This is should we, if we're gonna, if that's what we're gonna do, right? 
and just go long, which is fine if the manager and the coaches. Is... No, no, but what I mean is, okay, what he does it mean. No one, no. But what how many teams can you watch? How many teams? But there's no one that are not in. There's the nobody in the Premier League. That... I watched a bit of keep yard and Plymouth, and Plymouth were down to ten men and nine, and still flying forward. It's not good. It, you know. It's... But if we are, my point but... is, if we are going to do that. I'd rather than throw Beto alongside Calvert Lewin and just go, we're playing second balls, lads, we're knocking it long, Dom will win it, Beto get after it, or whoever, get after it, and that's what we're doing. But we're we're still a little bit confused at seeing him. deal next to Eddie Shagan again and said, that's me two centre midfield. Take it a boon off. Beto, Beto up front with, with Dominic Calvert Lewin and we'll have the two wide men and we'll, we're just going to have a little go for it. Mm. It's, it it's, it's, it's not good enough. It's... It's diminishing retained all the time because one thing people for, should have forgot, well, two things. Everyone else will improve this season, and they are. Mm. And the other thing is, everybody gets a chance to look at your team from the last season and see where, what changes you've made. Mm-hmm. We haven't changed anything. Mm-hmm. So teams will go, well, yeah, we know how to sort this. Lads just got to know how to defend the corners, mm-hmm. which haven't changed. Go to the back post, the Tarky, and then he knocks it down. Mm-hmm. And it's been unsuccessful in two games we've played it. Does win every header, don't it? Nothing is, yeah, but it's the second ball. Yeah. Now that's what they're all realising. We don't. It's the second Saying ball. this yesterday, our players as well. If I was playing at Tarkovsky, I'd just run off him all the time because he wins everything. Our players sort of wait for him to edit and then sort of go, oh, I could have got that. And you can and see him sometimes. Remember the side derby when Tarkovsky said to Dominic Harvard, I'll run off this and you just stand behind me. Yeah. You'll score. Yeah. He did. Haven't seen that corner since. It's diminishing return. Yeah. And I'm sorry we're running out of ideas. Well, that's why, again, and the manager, I'm sure he'll, he, the team, you're right, the team will change. And I think he sort of said in the press conference yesterday, he was, I'll do something about it. I won't be angry, I'll do something about it. Well, that's fine now. Now's the time to freshen it then. Because then front four from last year didn't, like I said before, didn't get any goals. They just they got, We were the second lowest goal scorers in the Premier League. So he's going to have to mix that up. The six days, five days to go. Yeah, five days to go in the transfer window. They need to bring a couple in. I'm sure they'll be doing everything they can to try and get those players in um, to give us a little bit of a boost because we need something. The manager has got the coaches. I've got to come up with something that's a little bit different. The, the framework and trying to be tough. Listen, we are where we are. We're, we're trying to... I'm sure the MO is just make sure we're in the Premier League when we get into the new stadium. Things should improve. Yeah. Isn't it? I don't know who said that, though. There's people with mad predictions. And listen... You never know what happens. I've sat there and watched Everton lose all sorts of games and then the next minute it flipped. Last year was a case in point. I think it will get better, but he's going to have to... I think it, I don't think it'll get massively better if we just persist with that four, though, because there's just not enough goals in it. There's not enough goals. It needs a freshness, like you say. There still needs to be a freshness there. Now, I again, I've looked at the, t- the three that come up. Not impressed with any of them, and I think they'll be the three that go down. But they will have a go in games, you know, and, and that we have to have a go. And you hope then that we have a go, we will start getting the rewards. My my worry is, like I think we'll beat Doncaster on Tuesday. I think there'll be a, he'll change it up. I think we'll beat. Don't think there's any, and we should be battling them anyway. Let's be honest. But Bournemouth is a tough game. It's a pressure game now because we go to Villa after that, and Villa are a good side. So imagine it. You know, I think I. You know, I'm hoping we beat Bournemouth, of course, and then that might give us a... But then, if we don't, and you go to Villa, and then you get beat at Villa, you're sort of like, here we go again. We're in September, we haven't won a game and, and all that. But we can beat Bournemouth at home. We just need to freshen it up. That's I, think, the thing. I, think, I think the positives are... Yeah. I think we've actually just played two good sides. No, we have. We have played two good sides. But I, that's a terrible away game, by the way. For the Open Spurs are somewhat weird that we... Well, they should, they should have won both, should they? So, we've played two tough games. Yeah. Now, hopefully, we're going to start to get players back. Seamus Coleman, James Garner, apparently are both available. Maybe for Saturday, but if they're not, be... And you're looking at... Brandtweight will be after the international. Brandtweight and, and Patterson, will, and that's mm-hmm. when they start, you start fleshing out your squad a little bit, and there's more competition. Um, people look maybe... Because one of the things about yesterday was, I think this would be... A lot of people would agree with me on this, is... The players were looked like it was a case of what well, can we keep the score down? To? Yeah, definitely. No belief we could win. No. And that's a terrible trait. But that might just be realistic to what what's going on in training and how many players are out 
I don't like, you know what, sorry, just to put in, sorry. Just one thing I didn't like was the manager sort of saying that, though. He said, will the players look around and go, oh, I'm not sure. He, he can't have that. That's got to, he's got to, he's got to forge that thing of where you look around and you have to, I know you do it as a player naturally, but it, the professional footballers, I don't think you can look and go, oh, we haven't got him and we haven't got him. We've got no chance. That, you need to make a belief of, we can, it's 11 v 11, we can all have a go at But don't you think he does that anyway? Like, on Thursday, on Thursday, I, I, I think I would have been selling everyone in the press that we had Roman Dixon fighting for a spot. And he's looked great so far and he looked good against Samian and I would have been bigging him up as much as I possibly can. Mm-hmm. But I just got to get the belief. I just it. think he underplays it so much and he undercuts everything that it's, it, you do get that negative atmosphere. Um, but we have to, I, manager who's telling us it like it is. Um, I think you're right, though. I think we're getting them players back will boost the squad. One thing I must say is I thought Harrison Armstrong did really well Premier League debut. You know, it was doesn't matter what the score was, and people go, well, it was he. It was, I thought he was really positive. He put that one, fired that one across that Romero, let's be honest, got away with it, and he sliced it over his bar. Well, and that, I thought he was... I thought he was. Him, well, it's good that him and Dixon are, are on the edge of the spot. On the, squad, on the yeah. edge of the squad because yeah. this is something we haven't seen we've, for, a, for a while yeah. is that players are coming through and I'll be honest I hope Dixon starts on Tuesday and I, I'll be well honest. he absolutely should I hope he start. I, I hope he starts on Saturday he won't because no, but I get that yeah. but as you said the first 20 minutes he was a little bit wobbly in his positional play yeah. and once he was like no I'm alright actually I'm alright here yeah. I'm as fast as you yeah. And I just and he once he got that okay, and he give the ball they give, give the ball away too much and that's that's something that at that level that's something you have to you have to iron out that and his players can't be giving the ball away as much as he did in the game so you have to iron that but once you get the confidence but I just look at the team and I just think it's so safe and you fall into the traps of God oh let's put we'll play him and, and he's also got something that we haven't got in this team it's just pace exactly isn't it? Exactly, and we don't have pace in the final third. That's pace, by the way, to get up and down. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. pace that you go up and you get back. Right. That's why our players won't go forward. It's because they don't think they can get back. Mm. Of course, fitness is a big thing and he, as the game went up. But it's... But I'm hope, I just think Saturday has to be one of those games where you look at it and go, we've got to get something out today. Mm. It's not panic stations, you know, as yet. You know... Because we have played two tough games. High pressure game. But that game is against the team. Like you think, right, they've lost their top goal scorer. They, they're trying to find their place, mm. what with how they're going. And um, it's a game that we won the last two seasons at Goodison Park. Mm. Last year to kick start our season, season before to stay in the Premier League. Mm. And we have to win it. Yeah. And there'll be an expectation. And I don't think the injury thing cuts. I really don't. I don't think it cuts mm. because he said it in the press conference. Why have we come back from why have we come back from last season where we did very, very well mm. and started the season so badly? Why have we gone up and then come down again? Mm. Now we mentioned Bonana, he can throw that excuse in the fucking bid. Mm. I'm not having that. Mm. Not for a player that he didn't like and he no. didn't want in the team. Not having that for one minute. And mm. no one else should use that excuse because yeah. he, he didn't play. And we all know that. No. So he can't get away with that. Okay, no James Garner's for player he does like. But as a team, as a unit, as whatever we think of this team, whatever way, whether we like the way they play or they don't play, when they play that, said this before, when they play that style to the best, we've got a chance to beat anybody. Yeah, yeah. Because that's our, that's, that's, it's not good. It's not good to watch. But it's a style that works for him and his team. We've not got some. Why can we watch a Spurs? Why can we watch an Arsenal? Why can we watch a Man City? Now they're the ultra that. The yeah, ultra they're like a spot. It. Yeah. Go from one season where they just go into the next Liverpool. and nothing changes, right? Hmm. Why is it that we finished the season and we're going to the Emirates in a very high pressure game and we did great? Hmm. The last few games at home, we did great. Hmm. We're not asking to play mad football. We're just asking to play well at what we do well. Mm. I, 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 I find that mad because the players don't look fit, mm. don't look organised, and he's shoe-owning players in that shouldn't be maybe. In. James Tarkowski, if I go, are not fit. 
It's clear as day. They have to, well, they have to play. Michalenko has to play. But Saki, I wouldn't have played yesterday have to play because he's, he's carrying an injury. But no, we'll get it. Will I think? Listen, I think it will. It will get better. It was just it's frustrating yesterday, but we knew it was always going to be a tough game, and of course. it's what we do now. It's what we do now. It needs freshening up. The front four doesn't work because there's just not enough goals in it. So we need to freshen that up. I'm sure he, they will look at. When they look back at the tapes and stuff, tapes. When they look back at the he cut the tapes. When they look back at the recording, they'll see that we actually looked a little bit more threatening once the two, the two new lads were in there. Find a way to get you know to to get that team sorted. Make people make people think who who is playing today. Not oh you know it's the core. Eh? We know it's McNeil and we know it's Harrison and we know it's Dom. Make you think is it is it the core? Eh? Is McNeil playing? Is 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 it Njai? Is it Lindstrom? Give everyone the little Philip that I can play. Is this Jake O'Brien coming in? You know, because on Tuesday, O'Brien plays for me, starts. So does Roman Dixon. So does Ndai. So does Lindstrom. They all start. And then you've got a question of, does Harris Armstrong? Well, no, but he, he should get on the pitch for, for more than 10 minutes. That kind of thing. And you build momentum. We, we win on Tuesday. Don't care if it's against Doncaster. Get a good, convincing win on Tuesday night. And then that builds a little bit of momentum going into the Bournemouth game. Of course, it'd be different. But at least then you come into that Bournemouth game going, we just won our last home game. We've, we've had a couple of bad results, but we've won the, next, the last game we played. Now can we get the can we affect it on the Saturday? And hopefully, fingers crossed, they have another couple of additions in the door as well. And that gives everybody a boost. But I think the coaching staff have got to be a little bit more offensive, particularly at Goodison. Just refine what we're doing because it can't always be safety first. Because that, I hate to say it, but it looks outdated when everybody else is playing on the front foot. It is outdated. So it's massively outdated. Mm. You just said before about your kids the way they play. They wouldn't. The kids don't play like that anymore. You said no, so. You no. change the kids don't play like that anymore. Mm. It's all all changed. It's football. It's possession and it's pressing. Mm. And we the pressing bit, we're not too bad. No. In the overall scale of things, yes. but we've got a manager who doesn't entertain football whatsoever, and it will catch up with you eventually. So that's so. If it's that, if you catch up to finish it, if that's what we're doing, and he doesn't want to play overplay, and again, I'm not someone who wants Evan to play like Martin as a team because that done my head in as well. Get people around your target. Then if we're going long, I mean, if that's how we're doing it, sound then get people around them so that when he wins headers. If the core ain't got the That's legs, insane. That's what I'm saying. We don't get do and jive well. We don't even do it well. Yeah. Dominic Carver Lewis or whoever plays in front is so isolated. Mm. That's that just the point. that's it's the pointless. variation it's for me. Pointless. The variation is be get people around them. And I'm, listen, I'm sure they'll look at it and go, "That's the area we need to." And let's hope we do because we need to start winning games. Let's have a look at the stats from the game. Why don't we? Uh, there you go. Spurs four Everton nil. Thirteen shots to Tottenham. Ten for Everton. Nine eight were blocked. Uh, from Everton, one wide from Harris and the other one from Linsom on target. Spurs had six, an XT of 2.43 for Tottenham, one from Everton from the set plays, 70% possession. Um, the other bit that is none there was Spurs had six big chances, Everton had zero in the game. And that ultimately is where we've got to improve. But they are a good side. There isn't, again, I said it on me, Matty, I wasn't raging because... I sort of knew what was coming because the, there's just a gulf between the two. When you take six players out of the squad who would make us at least a bit stronger, you know what's coming. Um, but we have got to improve. And we have, for me, we have got to start looking to mix that front four up because it, it just isn't working. You know, second lowest goal scorers in the league last season. It's not going to all. It's not going to write itself. We've got no goals. You know, we haven't scored a goal in August since we beat Brighton away two 0 that was a stat yesterday, uh, or that might be the last time we won a game in August, sorry. But it's 10 games now in August in the last three seasons we haven't won since that bright victory with Benitez. The day it all went wrong, wasn't it? It was, because Calvert-Lewin got injured. But listen, long season. Long season. We win. win at the, we win, beat Bournemouth next week. Then we go into the international break on at least a bit of a, a feel good of like, yeah, we won yeah. our last game, let's go. Big week as well, I think, for the recruitment team and, and for the it's club. Big week, it's a very big week for Everton football. Club. Yeah, five days. Really big week. Yeah, beat Doncaster as well. Come on. Two two wins this week. Two wins, but it all feels off different. Two wins, two players. Sounds good. 
Sounds good. Cool. Want that international break to come? I will. <laughs> Just to reset. Just to reset. reset. We want to be in here two weeks. <laughs> I know, but you know, reset so we can get all the players back fit. That's the that's the key. Listen, let us know what you think in the comments section below. What do we need to do? Don't just say win games because we know that. What do we need to do? Is it a case of bringing a bit of pace in, in this last week if we can? What do we do wrong? Were we, in your opinion, were we okay yesterday? Let us know in the comments. Like, subscribe, do all that stuff. You want to become a Premier member? Link is in the description. QR code on the screen. I'll see you later.